Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, come along with me as I paint my first ever pet portrait. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks I learned along the way, as well as some that I knew beforehand that I wanted to try out. Feel free to grab a sketchbook and draw along or paint along with me, and let's just jump right into this painting. So starting off with this painting, I've already drawn and sketched in what I wanted to paint and I'm putting down a border of washi tape. I did run out of one of them, so I had to break out another one. And I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife to break the border for this ear. And the washi tape should give me a nice clean line for my watercolors and make it look all nice and clean. I'm adding a nice clean layer of water to the background so I can get a nice layer of even paint down. I decided to use green because I wanted to complement the reddish brown tint of this dog. It is a Welsh Springer Spaniel that I'm painting. And it's one of my favorite dog breeds so I thought it would be a fun one to start off with. Uh, definitely a challenge but I'm glad I decided to paint this one. So I kept it simple by doing a basic watercolor blend laying down a flat green layer so there's no white showing through, and then just adding various green shades splotched throughout, letting them bloom and bleed into each other to give it a soft, subtle effect. So starting off with the dog, I put down a light paint layer. So when you're painting with watercolor, you want to paint light to dark because you can't get those light colors back unless you drag or lift. Especially on something like this, you really want to be careful with not painting everything dark, so you want to start off light. I left the brightest spots of the dog um, white for now, but I wasn't sure how dark I was going to get, and I went in with my first official layer of fur. So when you're painting dog fur, or fur in general, with watercolor, you want to layer it on top of each other. You don't have to worry about each little separate hair. And then as I add in each layer, it kind of builds on top of the previous one, and it looks like there's fur being built up throughout the layers when really I'm just painting a few lines here and there. Be careful when you're painting to lay down those fur strokes in whatever direction the fur is laying on the dog. That'll make your painting look more realistic and more three-dimensional. Shadows will help you get that depth, but you also need to be careful of laying down the hair in a way that shows that some parts coming out, some parts are dipping in. So just be on the lookout for that. I decided to paint the right side of the face first because this is my first pet portrait and I will not lie, I was kind of scared to do this. I wanted to test out how the fur would look and how I would kind of go about doing this. So I'm glad I did this because it gave me a lot more confidence going into the rest of the painting. I probably won't do this in the future though, in future pet portraits. I'll probably just work layer by layer with each color and that way my colors are more consistent and I don't have to keep mixing up the same color over and over. If you're painting your first pet portrait and you don't have the confidence to go into that really hard section or just like the main section, I would probably give this a shot because it, it really did lose my confidence because I saw how it was looking. I'm like, wow, this section looks really good even though I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> For the shadow of the face, I laid down a flat even layer and spread the edges into lighter sections and I pulled the hairs out of that paint so I wasn't worried about getting all the little hairs in the main big section of that shadow, just pulling it out so that it wasn't like a flat line because I don't want any sharp lines on here and I want all of the directions to be in the same direction so that the fur doesn't look like it's like splotched or matted. I want it to look like the right texture. Now painting around the eye was a little tricky because I needed to keep it light in some sections and dark in some sections so I'm looking back and forth and back and forth at my reference constantly to make sure that I'm not over painting on the dark sections and keeping those light sections light. I did go in with a redder paint. I think it was a cadmium red hue and I mixed it in with my burnt umber. 
and burnt siennas and it made this kind of nice coppery color. I added tons of water to that color and even though it was very light, it layered over the darker sections very nicely and it gave it that coppery color back because I was starting to lose like a little bit of the orange in there. So that was a nice little tip or trick if you want to bring that color back in. You can do like a light wash over top which you've already done but make sure not to do it too thickly and make sure not to put it over top. You still need to use those little fur lines to uh, keep that fur consistent. So for the eye, the eye is one of the main focal points in this particular painting and I wanted to make it look as realistic as possible because I thought that would help make the rest of this painting look even more realistic. So I went in and painted the shadow in the kind of darker line going around the eye. Careful not to paint too dark because I don't want to make it exactly black because I need to save the black for the darkest spots in this painting. So for the pupil, I needed to work pretty quickly because I wanted soft lines. So I went in with that dark black. I kept it decently watery and then I went in with the darker brown again on the edges of the iris and then it kind of faded into this look and it gave it a soft, lifelike feel to it. And then of course, I added that white highlight which was just a treat after painting all this brown and, and black and it's just probably one of the highlights of the painting. That was a horrible pun. If you laughed out loud at that, I, I have no words. <laughs> but moving on, moving on. I used up colors that I had already mixed, I'm letting my brush kind of just dance around loosely for the small little furs on the muzzle. And the browns, I kind of just did it how I felt it should look. Um, it's not 100% how the reference looked, but I was kind of having a hard time keeping it light in the sections that needed to be light. So I decided I would go back in later with the gouache that would help me lighten it up a little bit. So for now it looks a little muddy and a little dark, uh, but I think that's okay. So for the nose, I painted the darkest spots first. And then I went in with a watered down lamp black and layered that whole thing over top of the nose and then filled it in with some darker sections using some Payne's Gray. I even used a little bit of brown to get that little tint into the nose and then it kind of just came together. So moving on to what I felt like was one of the hardest things to paint in this piece, the ear. It was a little tricky to paint because when it comes to the fur placement, I wanted to keep the dark sections where the hair kind of overlaps and it's shadowed, but then also keep it light. And I did struggle with it a little bit on the ear. This is probably the one section in the piece that I didn't like as much as the rest, but I'm still really happy with how it came out, especially for my first time. I just kept those darker shadowed spots in using my darker brown, and then I'd go over top of it with that redder color just to keep it consistent with the color scheme and making it feel like it's shadows and less like a dark hair strand. I don't know if I fully attained that, but I still am very proud with how it came out. For first attempt, it was a great try. So hopefully I can improve on that a little more in the future. Next, I had to paint this white section, but it wouldn't really show up on camera. That to say, the same practices that I've already been applying applied to this section as well. I went ahead and added that white gouache over some of those brown muddy spots I was talking about on the muzzle. And then you'll see there's little white dots that I dotted along on the nose, which made it look so much more realistic. Now we come to the whiskers. So the key to making these clean, sharp, consistent lines is to do it in one solid motion, one swoosh. I love how it makes the whole thing come together. I don't know what it is about it, but just adding those whiskers just magically make it look like a finished piece. I am so proud of my first pet portrait. I 100% did not think it would turn out this great. I had a lot of just doubt of my ability as an artist. And I, I'm serious, I have never painted a pet portrait before and this was my first try. Now, I have been working to improve my art a lot this year, so I'm not surprised that it looks you know, better than I was hoping, but I am surprised at how realistic it looked. Like, I, I really did not think I had that in me, but I surprised myself and who knows, maybe you can surprise yourself too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you did, hit subscribe. I hope there were helpful tips in here for you. Uh, you can go follow me on social media where I post some of the progress updates, some behind the scenes sketches, just some little things that I like to keep you guys updated on and you can see when I'm working on my next video. But I love doing this for you guys and I love the support that you guys give me and I hope that I'm helping other artists who have fears conquer their fears while I'm trying to conquer my own. And I hope that even if you're a better artist than me, you enjoy watching me create and enjoy watching my art journey. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye and happy creating.